Previously on Arm Garage, I removed the behemoth of an engine out of this 1993 Land Cruiser, and today I'm going to get started on tearing this thing apart so I can get started on the rebuild. But first, we have to wash this thing. It's nasty. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be tearing down this 1FZ out of my 80 series Land Cruiser. In the last episode, I took the motor out of the truck because it had a bad timing chain guide and in order to replace that, you have to tear this thing down to a short block in frame. That's a ton of work. It's not easy to move around in the engine bay of an of a 80 series Land Cruiser. And I just thought it wouldn't be worth it and super annoying, so just pulled the whole motor out. What the plan is, is to tear this thing down to the short block and basically replace most of the components that come off during that. So the head gasket, the timing chain, the timing chain guides, the timing chain gear, all the stuff that would come with the timing kits getting replaced on this thing. All the gaskets that would be leaking, which would be like the oil pump. Uh, we'll get a new water pump on there. We'll replace the front main seal, well, all the seals, because this thing's leaking from every single place that it possibly can. Another thing is that I'm gonna have my girlfriend help me tear this thing apart because I just thought it'd be a good time to introduce her into motors and wrenching in general, so this should be a pretty fun episode. You kind of hold the head and you push down so it doesn't um, tilt. I'm just going through the basics here, how to use hand tools such as a breaker bar, and then we'll go into power tools. There, hold it. Oh. Oh, don't hold it weird like that. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna take it out from, uh, I don't know, the pump, whatever you wanna call this thing. You can use it like a normal ratchet. You can put it on there and use it like a breaker bar, like this. Mm -hmm. It'll still, and then you can pull the trigger. Try to put the palm of your other hand here. You just kind of hold it in place. And now push down. Nice, that's good. Now grab the whole pipe and shake it and shimmy it out of there. Oh, that came out easy. Nice, and there's probably gonna be some gaskets that are gonna fall. Uh, no, but there's that gasket right there. You're gonna wanna take that off. Cool. So just to recap, even though it's pretty obvious, I'm starting with the exhaust side because it's easier and then I'm going to move over to the intake side. Make sure you hold that manifold, it's going to fall. Can just pull the whole thing towards you, there you go. Yeah, they're all pulling the stud out with it. Don't do that. Okay, go ahead. So that, that sound it was making, the like grinding metal sound, was because this was spinning and coming off of the bolt and what it will do is it'll round the edges of the bolt. We do not want to do that. All right, the exhaust manifolds are off, and now what I've started doing is just labeling some things so I know where they go. So you can see here, this says two therm heater. Uh, I'm pretty sure this goes to the heater hoses, and as you can see, it goes down to the thermostat right here. So in my opinion, two therm heater is a great label for this particular pipe. We're gonna get this out of the way, uh, get this pump out of the way. That's just held onto the side of the head, and there's a couple of vacuum lines. I kind of use these videos for reference later as well. So future me, these lines go here. One vacuum line is there. One vacuum line goes here and runs to the front of the cylinder head. So yeah, we're gonna pull this pump off, pull this coolant line off, and then pop out this housing right here as well. And this thing basically just pulls right up out of there. It's held in by these two bolts and an O-ring.
far as I can tell, the exhaust side of the engine is done. Megan did an excellent job taking this side apart. The intake side is a lot more complicated. We have to take off the throttle body, distributor, alternator, separate the upper from the lower and pull that wiring harness out. As you can see, the whole thing runs through the uh, intake manifold right here. So the upper intake has to be separated from the lower intake. We've got to get the injectors out and basically a bunch of other stuff to, to, to free the intake manifold from the head to be able to get the cylinder head off of the motor. So I'm going to start tearing this thing apart and then what the plan is is to roll it into the garage because obviously I don't want to rebuild this thing outside. We don't want any foreign material or objects to actually get into the motor. The more work I put into this engine, the happier I am that I pulled it out of the Land Cruiser. I really can't imagine how frustrating all this would be in the frame. Here I'm setting the motor to top dead center before I remove the distributor. I guess it really doesn't matter since it's all coming apart and I'll be resetting the timing anyway, but I suppose it's better to exhibit good practice and technique than to be negligent. At this point, I was wondering why things were going so smoothly, and then this happened. This bolt was really soft and it immediately rounded when I tried to remove it. I ended up trying to chisel it out, that didn't work, so then I just hammered an 11mm socket on there and I was able to pull it out that way. Welcome to day two. I could have probably got all this done on day one, but I started working on the motor on day one at like 3 p.m. The reason being on the weekends, I have a tendency to stay up really late playing video games with all of my bros, and then I wake up really late too, just being honest here. So today, the plan is to get the upper and lower intake manifold removed along with all the wiring, vacuum lines, and the fuel rail. Then I'll get started on pulling the cylinder head. Alright guys, I made some more progress on this motor. As you can see, the upper intake manifold is off. I have all of the parts that we've removed over here on the table. These aren't that organized because I just know where they all go. Everything that matters is in bags, kind of like this guy right here. Got a bunch of bags over there too, you just can't see them. But in order to get this lower intake manifold off, I think I'm gonna have to remove the fuel rail right here with all the injectors. So we're gonna have to disconnect all the injector clips going through there. and find a way to snake this harness between these two runners right here and pull that through from right here. Uh, so we're gonna have to disconnect all of these wires too, all these sensors, the knock sensors, there's one there, one over here. Um, this is probably for your oil level, that has to come off too. Then I'm gonna have to take off uh, this fuel line right there. And I, I don't know if that's supposed to be bent like that, so the previous people that installed this fuel filter might have mangled it up a little bit, because I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be straight. And then I think once all that stuff is taken off, we can pull off this lower manifold and start getting the valve cover off and take off the cylinder head. The reason why this has to come off is because we need to get the fuel rail out and this connects to it. So once this guy comes off, we should be able to disconnect the three bolts that hold that rail on and take that out. This looks easy on camera, but it wasn't. I spent about 10 minutes cleaning gunk out of these connectors because I couldn't depress the clips. If 
you've ever heard the term pesky heater hose and were wondering where it was, it's right here on the side of the cylinder head. And this is with everything removed, you can see where it would be, it'd be right there. And this one's never been replaced. You see the factory clamps right there. So if you're wondering, that's the pesky heater hose. All right guys, I've been making a lot of progress on the motor, got the intake manifold off as you can see, and now I'm basically working on a parts list of all the things I'm gonna have to replace up to this point. So I knew that I was gonna have to replace a lot of stuff on this motor, and here's the list so far. So as you guys can see, hopefully, I already have on there exhaust studs and nuts, gaskets, exhaust pipe pump thing gaskets, thermostat tube o-ring, cracked hose near throttle body, you know, the bypass hose, dipstick o-ring, EGR gasket, injector clips, uh, the fuel filter, banjo washers. We're gonna service the O-rings, knock sensor clip, and inspect the harness for other broken clips. I definitely expected a couple of these clips to break, but overall this harness is actually in really good condition, in much better condition than my pickup, and it's only, you know, five years newer of a vehicle. The only clips that broke were, I mean, every single injector clip broke, all six of them. And then, which one of these are the knock sensor? Um, one of the knock sensor clips broke as well. This is the good one. The bad one is this one right here. So you can't really tell on camera, but when you push this clip down, it doesn't have any clippiness to it anymore. I have the block draining all the coolant right now. I removed the block drain right here. When I have Megan help me remove the cylinder head, I don't wanna cover her in coolant. She wouldn't appreciate that very much. But I think at this point, I am ready to remove the valve cover. I already have the engine set on top dead center. Pull the timing gear off, get the cams out, and then lift this head off the block. So I made some match marks right here, even though the factory match mark was lined up right there with the dot, that's not gonna line up to the link in the chain that it did when this was first installed. So I went and made some match marks just to make this easier. I'm, I'm replacing all the timing components anyway. I guess I'm just getting a little bit of practice here and just following um, the procedure of the FSM. Then I, I zip tied the actual chain to the sprocket so it doesn't move. Now in the FSM, it says that you are at top dead center on the compression stroke if these two dots on the back of the camshaft sprockets, see if I can get this. You can kind of see it right there. If those two dots on the back of the camshaft sprockets align with the cylinder head, then you are on top dead center on the compression stroke. So now I think I can go ahead and remove this timing chain tensioner right here and start getting this sprocket off and the cams out. Here's the piece that caused this whole engine rebuild in the first place. Look at that. Look how brittle this is, watch. Of course, now on camera, it doesn't want to be brittle. There you go, look at that, man. It was just sitting in there. When I first took the valve cover off, when I found this, there was just a piece sitting right there in the timing cover. So yeah, this is why the engine's out. All right, so this part's a little weird to me. Basically, it has a warning here when you're removing the camshafts and it's telling you if you do it wrong, it has minimal clearance and it can actually warp the cylinder head or the camshaft itself. Another thing that I thought was interesting is the cam gear on the exhaust side is actually two pieces and it appears to be spring-loaded in between. What they're wanting you to do is they're wanting you to spin this camshaft around and install a bolt through one of these holes like right there, to kind of clamp this thing and hold it together. Now, I did reference an O-Tram video as well, which I saw him do that. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing and just be really careful when I'm taking these cams out of the cylinder head. Okay, so I should be able to turn this camshaft and one of these bolt holes are going to go all the way through. And then that's the one that we can use as the service bolt. So I'm gonna go ahead and start rotating this thing now.
This is the one right here. So we're gonna put a bolt into this hole right here. So I just grabbed a little six millimeter bolt out of my spare uh, bolt jar, and I'm gonna go ahead and install that in the camshaft sprocket right here. I don't know if this thing has to turn or not. If it does, this isn't gonna work, but I guess we'll see. Okay, this isn't a how-to video, but I figured I should probably explain this part because there's probably gonna be somebody in the future that's gonna be running through the same confusion that I am right now. So this is where the service bolt goes. It's a six millimeter bolt. It goes directly through the gear to the other side. The length of the bolt is, you know, it's, it's a short bolt. It doesn't need to be a, a huge bolt, it's just a normal bolt. Now, what it tells you to do in the service manual afterwards is it says to turn the two dot marks 35 degrees. Now, two dot marks to me is not very intuitive. This is what they're talking about. Let me grab this flashlight real quick. There's a two dot mark on the back of the camshaft right there. Let me get light on it for you. Right there, and it's pointed up at 35 degrees. And the reason for this, I guess, is so that you can evenly remove this camshaft and not bend it or warp the cylinder head. So once this is at 35 degrees, and I verified this against O-Tram's video as well, making sure all my cam loads were in the same position, uh, you can start removing the cam. Another way that you can verify this, I don't know why I keep putting this thing back, is on the six cap, the lobes will be just on the outboard side of the, of the lifter, and on the four cap, they will be just on the inboard side of the lifter right there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the first cap. Then once that caps off, we can take off uh, three, five, and seven, but, but not four and six, it says in the manual. It says to do those last and do it evenly so that the cam comes out evenly. If it starts to bind whatsoever, retighten four and six and redo the whole process. I think in that last clip, I missed out on this cylinder one cap. This one comes off first. This is a tedious process that is greatly simplified on camera that might make it seem like it's not required, but it's pretty important. The camshaft can bind and it will either ruin your camshaft, head, or both. The purpose of this is to remove the camshaft with even pressure so no damage occurs. The pressure of the valve springs under the lobes is driving up against the cam caps and it needs to be removed properly and evenly. So here's the part that apparently matters the most, and it's that we uniformly remove caps four and six, making sure that this thing comes out of here evenly. And if it doesn't, we have to repeat everything that we just did. Bearing cap four is off. Bearing cap six is about to come off. Nice. Now this camshaft should just lift out of here. It's going to. All right. Mission successful. I feel like they made that really overly stressful in the service manual. I felt like this thing was gonna explode or something, but there's the camshaft. Got it out of there, no problem. All right, so for the intake camshaft, I'm doing the exact same thing. I moved the cam to 25 degrees this time, but it's the exact same process as last time. The cam lobes on one and four are putting equal pressure on the lifters here. And just like last time, there's a sequence. We're gonna take off, or we're gonna loosen the bolts for the first cap, and then they want you to loosen three, four, six, and seven, but not two and five and three, four, six, and seven need to be loosened in a specific order as well, which is basically working from the outside in. So seven, three, and six, and four. So we're gonna go ahead and start loosening these things now.
All right, same thing for two and five as the other ones on the exhaust camshaft. Just loosen these ones last and do it uniformly, and this thing should be coming out evenly. If it doesn't, we're gonna have to redo all those previous steps. But I think we'll be good. And the intake cam should just lift right out of here. No issues removing this cam either. Pretty easy. I'm marking these shims because they're all clearanced specifically for the cam lobe that they ride under. If these go back in the wrong place, then I'm going to be completely out of spec with my valve clearance. So I'm marking them clearly with an I for intake, an E for exhaust, and then numbered to correspond with the valve that they go to. I'm also using a magnet to remove these because if I leave them in the head when I take it to the machine shop, they're all gonna fall out and I could lose them. Same thing with the washers for the head bolts, which you'll see later in the video. Here are the head bolts and washers I was talking about previously. I'm using a magnet to remove them and making sure that I do not forget the washers that live under the head bolt. All right, the cylinder head is ready to be pulled, but before I do that, I just wanna show you guys how I'm organizing everything and keeping everything in check so when I put this back together, things go into the right place. So the first thing that you're gonna do is just toss everything on your workbench and you'll just figure out where it goes later. When that time comes, uh, hopefully you can just figure out where things are supposed to go based off the, the shape and the fit, and that's typically the best way to go about it. I'm just kidding. That kind of stuff doesn't matter because I know where it all goes. When it comes to cylinder head parts and, and engine internals, things need to be kept very organized. So the first thing that I always do is I follow the book. So you saw I took this off in a sequence, I took the cams off in a sequence, I took all of the lifter buckets out of there, and I have it all organized over here. So everything's labeled intake one all the way to intake 12, exhaust one all the way to exhaust 12. Every single one of these is shimmed specifically for the valve that they are installed on. I have my uh, intake cam here, exhaust cam there. All the bearing caps are laid out right here. These cannot get mixed up. They're actually bored and designed for the cylinder head and you don't wanna mix these things up. And then I have all the head bolts labeled uh, in order. So this is the front of the engine right here and this is how they would go back into the motor. This might not matter that much, but I just like everything going back exactly where it came from. Even all the bolts in the cam caps are the exact bolt that was in that position when I removed the cap. So nothing is moved, everything is exactly as it was. At this point, we are ready to pull the cylinder head off this thing, it's completely loose. I'm just gonna go grab Megan and then lift this thing off of the engine block. All right guys, the cylinder head is off and here's the cause for all of our problems right here. The broken timing chain slipper as they call it, just a guide. Um, one thing I wanted to show you was look how beautiful these cylinders look. Like still have cross hatching in them, no signs of any issues in those cylinders. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this engine and see how it looks in one and six, but two to four, they look, they look great. This has 230,000 miles on it, I believe. And I really don't think I'm gonna go in there and change anything. But I'm kind of curious in the comments below, let me know if you would take this apart, at least put new rings in it and new bearings. It did test 185 PSI across all six cylinders before I took this thing out of the Land Cruiser. So let me know what you would do. I almost forgot one more thing. In the last video when I was taking off the valve cover half moon, these guys over here, they're somewhere over here, um, these guys, I broke the outside edge of one of these, as you can see 
Is this the one? Yeah, as you can see right there, the outside edge is broken. And I found one piece of the aluminum, but I couldn't find the other piece. I knew it fell into the engine. I just didn't care because I was already kind of pissed off that I had to do this. So I started it anyway. There it is. Look at that. Look how lucky I got. It was sitting here on top of the timing cover. Just that piece of aluminum right there snapped off of that half moon from the valve cover. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up this episode. I'm gonna go ahead off camera and coat those cylinders with some WD-40 or some sort of oil so they don't flash rust while this thing's sitting out here. As I did mention in the last clip, let me know what you guys would do with that bottom end. Would you replace any of the rings or the bearings or would you just leave it as is? I'm really leaning on just leaving it as is, but I know I already have it out of the truck. It would be smart to replace everything while we're here. Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss when I post new videos with this Land Cruiser build and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.